Hello everybody, welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Uh, today on the bench uh, I've got a little uh, CB radio that I picked up the other day at a uh, flea market. Uh, it's a little unit in PC33. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stick this in the truck and uh, use it to listen to the, uh, the trucker's jibber jabber and get some real-time uh, road updates and so on and so forth. Um, I've already checked it out, uh, took the covers off, looked at it, made sure everything looked okay, uh, applied power to it, and uh, tested it out here on the bench. Everything looked great on it. Uh, I put it in the truck, and uh, as soon as I start moving, the, the receive goes in and out. Uh, and I'm thinking it's either uh, dirty control or uh, probably a bad solder joint. Uh, could also be uh, an issue with evil brown glue or uh, a broken wire somewhere. I just won't know until I go through it. So, uh, one of the first steps that I take whenever I have a radio on the bench is I go ahead and uh, I get my uh, inspection microscope and uh, I start scanning across the board. I start in one corner and just work my way across and uh, usually I get in here with a small pick and I'm pretty gentle about it and I remove any uh, solder flux that I see. Uh, at least get the big chunks of it off. I have a spray that's a, uh, a flux remover but uh, with, a, with that and a bristle brush uh, you could be here all day just removing the uh, solder flux. So I like to get the larger portions of it off with a tool of some kind and then uh, from there I can move into uh, inspecting joints and finishing the cleanup with the spray. So let me take a quick look here, scan across the board. Oh, I already see uh, one cold joint here, so I'll have to come back to that. I'll take a picture so that you can see uh, what I'm seeing so that you know uh, what to look for. Uh, cold joints, cold solder joints can either be really obvious or uh, not very obvious at all depending on uh, what the original issue is. Uh, this is a uh, ground tab at the back of the radio and uh, apparently there's been some flex to it at some point. Oh, there's another cold joint. Uh, there's been some flex to it and it has broken loose. So I just do a quick cursory scan across the radio looking for anything that, uh, that really sticks out at me. Of course another thing, um, this radio is probably from the late 70s, early 80s. I'm not really sure. I haven't really uh, looked into it all that much. But uh, you can expect that the capacitors will be going bad in this radio by now. Any radio that you pick up uh, that's vintage like that you may have issues with the electrolytic capacitors going bad. That's why it's good to always uh, look into replacing that pretty soon. I'll be replacing the electrolytics in this radio before too long. There is another joint that uh, looks like it may have some issues. This one has a bubble in it and in fact I'm going to go ahead and reflow this joint right now because the defect is uh, so minor that uh, I may not uh, remember exactly where it's at. Yeah, that bubble collapsed. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get in here with some desoldering braid. I'm going to pull the bad solder off. And uh, I've got a roll of Kester 6040 uh, lead solder. I don't use the lead free. Uh, I find that the leaded solder makes a, good, a uh, better connection. I'm just going to uh, get in here. There we are. And I'm going to re-solder this terminal. There we go. Very good. All right. And then I'm going to move on with my inspection. Pretty straightforward. All of the connections between the front circuit board and the main circuit board look good. 
All right, so let's go back to this first cold solder joint. And uh, I'm gonna reach across here and get my phone. And I'll take a picture with my phone. I don't have an adapter to uh, put my camera on my microscope my inspection scope and so I just kind of have to do it by hand oh, come on now there we go as Mike's radio repair would say or Mike from Mike's radio repair hocus pocus focus all right and let me find that other connection that had a defect there it is and I'll grab a picture of that real quick as well And now I'm going to go ahead and rework these real quick, as long as I'm here. So this one is where a ceramic capacitor is bodged onto the bottom. And it looks like uh, when that was done... Ooh, that's a big set. Come on. It's taking a little bit of heat to, uh, to melt that. Um, at some point that capacitor has been tugged and it's pulled loose from the solder just a little bit. It's probably still making electrical contact just fine, but as long as I'm here and I'm working on it, I want to make it right. No use having something that may fail further on. Go ahead and apply some fresh solder and get a good reflow here. That's looking pretty good. I'll, uh, I'll take a picture of that as well so that uh, y'all can see the, uh, the before and after. Okay, and I'll move to that connection uh, on the ground tab here at the back. And I can see that the, uh, let me zoom in here, and I can see that the capacitor has been tugged here as well. Huh. Interesting. All right. So I'll go ahead and grab my braid. And the braid that I'm using, I don't have a vacuum desoldering tool. I'm using Super Wick Fine Braid, catalog number 425. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them. I don't sell the product, but I do like it. In fact, uh, last time I was at Fry's in Austin the other day, I bought a, uh, a big roll of the stuff so I can stop buying the tiny rolls. Alright, now let's see here. A lot of times if I find a bad solder joint in a piece of equipment, I like to go ahead and just pull some of the solder out and add fresh solder to it uh, just because. Um, a lot of times seems like solder that's been in a piece of equipment for a long time can be kind of funky and uh, I don't like to attempt to do reflows all the time so I'll just uh, do fresh. I didn't get all the solder off of this one and uh, it's to the chassis of the radio, the actual metal chassis and so it's taken quite a heat, quite a lot of heat to get it to do what it needs to do. So you'll be able to see that this uh, this connection looks funny, and uh, and that's okay. It's better than it was. Oh come on! There we go. Very good. Now let's see here. Since one end of that was tugged, I want to check the other end. It looks fine. I do see one terminal here that looks like it was reflowed at some point, but not all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that again, just to make sure. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm not really happy with that. And a lot of times that happens. Uh, I end up not being happy with something, and, and I just go and redo it. So. I, I wish I had the ability to show you the process that I'm using here. I'll have to print out an adapter so I can put 
my phone on this and show the video on my channel. But that'll be something I'll do. Shortly I have a friend that just purchased a 3D printer and he's printing me a printer and once I have that all set up then uh, I'll be able to uh, show some of the work that I'm doing on various radios. Uh, I picked up several other CB radios that I'm going to go through and fix. Uh, not necessarily because I'm going to use them but uh, just because I like working on equipment. I'm going to take one more look at the uh, connections on the front of this radio where it goes from the main board to the front board just to make sure nothing is cracked that there's no cold joints everything's looking good I can tell somebody's been in here at some point and reflowed at least a couple of these I don't like this particular method of manufacturing, but it's something that was used uh, frequently on equipment from this vintage. Alright, so that is looking good. I'm going to go ahead and grab the cover, stick the cover back on, and get this ready to test. Uh, that's what I wanted to show for today. I'll go ahead and cut those images in and uh, get this video posted, and then uh, that way you can see what's going on. I hope that you have found this video informative. Uh, I uh, also hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.